Happy July 4th, everybody. We are the Cinefanatics. My name is Robert Adams. I'm Steve Rogers. You're something. Or, that's definitely true. <laughs> I don't know what, but you're definitely something. I am uh, America's ass. Yeah, it, definitely, or at least this apartment's one. Uh, I hope you all had a fantastic July 4th uh, weekend. Happy Independence Day to America. Uh, thank you for joining us here as we're going to do a live public watch along of Captain America, the first Avenger. Now, I understand before we get started with this, uh, that I said happy like Independence Day to America because that is what July 4th is. And I understand that we're here on the internet where people can see us from all over the world. So I'd like to take a, a, a few moments, not, not too long, but really I'm going to try to make it short. I'm going to go through a list and celebrate or at least mention every single country in the entire world's Independence Day. Let's start with, uh, what do we got first? Alberia, uh, your Independence Day is on, I have no idea I'm not doing that. That's going to be forever. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, as we get started, we are going to be, again, watching Captain America, The First Avenger. Uh, it's available on Disney+, Plus, or if you all happen to have it, DVD, Blu-ray, fire those up. We will get that started uh, probably here in about 10 minutes or so. Um, as we let's have go ahead and give it about them. 15. You want to give 15? Let's give it about 15. Okay, so uh, boy wonder over there, it's saying 15. When Captain America throws his mighty shield, sweet, all those who oppose his mighty shield must yield. You look like Captain America's, like, uh, the way he would be after going, like, a whole weekend bender. Unless you're a bomb or a plane or some ice. Then you'll take a nap because the ice is nice. Wow. When Captain America throws his mighty shield. Uh, wait, so we're doing Captain America, right? Something doesn't seem right about this overlay. Hold on, let me fix something real quick. There we go. Much better. Uh, so it <laughs> seems to be more in line with what we're doing. Oh. Uh, guys, if y'all have any questions, comments, anything y'all want to, uh, y'all want to let us know streamlabs.com slash cinefanatics that will be open throughout the entirety of this, uh, this watch along. Uh, also as a teaser, patreon.com slash cinefanatics we will typically do a watch along at least once a month that's going to be at the five dollar tier so if you enjoyed this watch along here you want to see another one hop on that patreon.com slash cinefanatics at least at the five dollar dude tier you'll be able to see other watch alongs i believe we have one coming up this month it's going to be for space jam because <laughs> they've got a second one coming out so we're gonna watch. We're gonna do the Patreon watch along of the first Space Jam movie because it only makes sense to do it when the new one comes out. So that's what's gonna be happening. Uh, I believe that's gonna be what next week. Is that next week or the week after? Yes. Let's consult. Yeah, you just like yes, one of one of those is correct. Let's let's just go with a yes. Uh, that will be that will be next week. That's gonna be on the fifteenth. So, yeah, make sure you'll sign up on the Patreon and you'll be able to join us for that one as well. Because I have a feeling we're going to have a lot to talk about. That movie has not aged very well at all. <laughs> Speaking of a movie that did age very well, this one aged apparently 70 years. Oh, that's a fun thing to, you that's know, a I'm weird, talking. weird, fun segue. But I mean, it works. Off. that's enough of that. <laughs> what are your thoughts on uh, uh, Captain America, the first Avenger? First of all, have you seen this movie already? Gosh, I should hope so. Um, in a world where we're past Endgame now, I hope I saw this one. I wonder how confusing that would be if you watched Endgame, but you never actually like watched the rest of the MCU. I feel like Endgame was one of those you had to uh, you have to watch the previous movies, yeah, to be able to keep sure. up with this. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously saw this one. It came out in 2011, so there was, you know, there's there's a there's a love for all the all the MCU movies, every single one of them. Yeah. Um. So again, as this plays, uh, like I said earlier, we're going to be playing it from uh, Disney Plus. However, else you have available to watch it, I am going to keep a timer running. 
So if at any time we're watching this, if you want to know, if you get lost, something messes up, you want to know exactly where we're at, I can hold this up for a little while and you'll be able to see uh, where we are at in the movie. Uh, I absolutely love uh, this movie. Like the first Captain America, I think out of all the, was it the phase one movies with the exception of Avengers, I think this was probably my favorite. Yeah. Like I actually liked this more than Iron Man or Iron Man two. Uh, I liked it more than incredible Hulk and uh, it's, it's a close run with Thor. I liked the first Thor. I think this one just edges it out a little bit more. I think a lot of that comes from, especially this movie, this movie, they've tried making Captain America movies before. You got the the Matt Salinger one uh, that had like the weird like Italian Red Skull, um, and then you had the the Red Brown one, which is the one where his his mask was essentially a mortal so- motorcycle helmet the entire time. Like <laughs> even when he wasn't on his motorcycle, he still wore a mask, and his mask was the motorcycle helmet, and it was really weird. They're trying to make it practical because you know the Captain America mask is kind of corny so he's got like the little flying wings and everything so you want to try to make it practical make it a motorcycle helmet yeah well <laughs> that still didn't with work. wings yeah oh um that still didn't work so i mean this movie captain america they've tried before and they just really haven't done a, a really good job with it so doing this this one that's why i feel like i like this is because they legitimized it. They made it real and it worked and it worked phenomenally while Thor, we really haven't gotten a Thor movie. The closest we got was, uh, that bit of Thor from that, uh, that, uh, incredible Hulk movie. There was an incredible Hulk movie with the bill Bixby back in the day. Uh, they did a movie with, uh, Thor on there. Um, and that was kind of, that was kind of weird, but, they did that movie was still Hulk focused and not so much Thor, but right. Uh, they also did one with Daredevil, The Trial of the Incredible Hulk, and that was strange because he was just a dude like in a black costume the whole time, kind of like the beginning of the Daredevil uh, Netflix show. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Well, we could do this all day. Yeah, um, possibly. <laughs> Except we have to at least at some point. At least for the next, uh, was it uh, two, two hours, hours and some odd minutes. minutes? Yeah. Uh, so AJ yeah. Lancaster saying, can't stay for a watch long, but had to drop a like and my hot take. This movie is tied with Black Panther for my favorite art direction and costuming in the MCU. Uh, I can understand that, uh, especially because a lot of this movie does take place like in the 1940s. So being able to nail those those costumes from way back when, uh, and like again, going back to what I was saying about the Captain America costume itself, they've tried to legitimize it before and it failed. <laughs> uh, the actually, uh, also the Matt Salinger costume wasn't that bad. I, I think that one's probably the closest they've gotten, but like otherwise they failed in it. The costumes in this are they look period accurate. And they work within the 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 confines of the story that they're telling. Uh, Superhero I do, story. Yeah, I do like the very very goofy Captain America outfit that he wears when doing the USO shows. Yeah, I saw someone earlier. I think it was earlier today. I saw someone post like on Twitter where they showed uh, the picture of him in that. Then there was the picture of. Scarlet Witch and Vision in their uh, Halloween costume, and then there was the picture of the old Loki from the Loki show. And like, why can't we get more of this? Like, all of them in like a very cheap, crappy looking, but pretty much comic book accurate rendition of their costumes. Right. <laughs> um. I, I like that. I like what they've been doing with some of those costumes though in the Marvel shows because they. It's it's a nice homage to people who like read the comics, grew up with the comics, remembered the characters looking a certain way, and then whenever they get to like throw the classic comp, the comic book uh, accurate version of the costume on screen, you're like, hey, hey, that's what I know. It's always fun. Yeah. Uh, how much? Let's see. How much time do we have left before we start? Five minutes. Cool. Glad I asked. 
There's your answer. Ask and you shall receive. So, again, given enough time for people to join us. Yeah. Again, we do these watch alongs once a month on Patreon. Um, so, again, if you like this one, hop on Patreon. The $5 tier will get you even more, including Space Jam this month. Uh, anyways, is there anything else about Captain America that we want to we wanna go over? Uh, the song I was singing, the when Captain America throws his mighty shield, I believe was originally what, from the TV show, but uh, the if, was it the radio, the like the or, radio, the serial, or the serial, yeah. Um, and then of course the version I sung was the version that was redone by How It Should Have Ended. Yeah, because it was hilarious. Oh, anyways. Um, yeah, I think most of everything else I want to talk about this movie is while the movie's actually playing. So, uh, anything else we want to talk about real quick, like any quick housekeeping? I mean, we got all sorts of stuff going on. Uh, we, we're doing this partly because one, 4th of July, America. Yeah. Um, yeah. the other part is because Black Widow is coming out, in which case we are definitely going to be having a review for that up on this channel shortly thereafter. So that is, that's one thing to be looking forward to. Um, we're doing all sorts of stuff on this channel as well. Tagline on Tuesday nights. Uh, it's our live stream show. We're going to be doing it tomorrow night. That's where we talk about movie news, the headlines, all that kind of good stuff. Um, probably going to, I'm probably going to highlight uh, a movie I just watched today uh, there. So if you want to hear, say, about the Tomorrow War. Let's talk I about that Tomorrow. That. Let's talk about tomorrow on the tagline. I, I, and like, I really don't feel like we have time today. We'll do it tomorrow. Exactly. So there's that. Um, I mean, we got all sorts of other stuff coming on. Uh, Join our Patreon. We're doing all sorts of stuff over there, preparing for movie trivia matches because we're part of the first class league of the movie trivia showdown. So you guys can help us prepare for movie trivia matches and, and whatnot there. Um, we're doing, we got the Discord. It's $1 join in for the Discord on Patreon. So pretty easy. And again, how, how, and all sorts of stuff. How was your July 4th? July 4th was wonderful. I really enjoyed myself. Well, so you should know you were there too. <laughs> I was there too. Yeah. No, I, well, no, I, I meant you would say that to me. Anyways. Yes, you were there too. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> so no it was a lot of fun because like we got to do fireworks and there was people and we got to do fireworks with people again and i didn't get that last year because reasons and we get to hang out with people and do fireworks and it just felt great it felt good again to be able to just hang out with people in a park and watch fireworks go off in the sky yeah anyways uh let's get this started Let's get it started. And yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, if you everyone's got your movie queued up, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, count down from three, three, two, one, and then I'm going to hit play. On play, hit play. <clears throat> I feel like that's kind of like self explanatory And you're going to be but, keeping the timer also for uh, yeah. anyone who might join us late. Yeah. So again, I'll have the timer here. If y'all get lost or if you're joining us late, which case you don't see me telling y'all that I have a timer, but hopefully y'all will just know as for the time and I'll hold it back up. <laughs> just rewind to the beginning and then jump forward. Yeah. Anyways, are we ready to go? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So here we go. Getting everything ready. And in three, two, one play. Uh, back when Paramount was doing everything oh, that's for the right. MCU. Well, Paramount and Universal, I should say, because Universal was Incredible Hulk. Tonight's watch along brought to you by Waterloo Watermelon, because summer. There's the old uh, Marvel Studios intro. Yeah, we don't get the... Stuff anymore at this point. Uh, 
So I remember like before these movies came out, they were saying that this one was bookended in present day. I was like, ooh. That like you knew exactly. See... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that means we're going to see them digging at Captain America. And that means we're going to see him try to adjust to, to the modern day afterward. <laughs> this guy would be great at cinema sense. <laughs> <laughs> Who else would I be? No, I came from Cincinnati. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Weather balloon. Poppycock. <laughs> Language, one heaven of a crane. <laughs> okay, so I've like pretty much grown up in Texas. The like the hoods that they wear have that fur on the outside. What is that fur on the outside for? It's not even touching their face. It doesn't do anything. Wind block. Well, wouldn't that be what the hood does itself? Wind block for their face. I guess. It's like the uh, fuzzy thing that we put on our microphones on our cameras. You put a fuzzy thing on your microphone. <laughs> I we, don't like fuzzy things on my microphones. We call it a dead cat. Shh. Lola's going to hear you. Where is Lola? Have you checked my microphone? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, someone who lives further north than we do, for explaining that. Ferris. I love this movie. This movie gets too much. Yeah, I, I don't understand why. Maybe this People, movie, because this movie is made as more of a period piece rather than like a straight up superhero movie. Yeah, and I mean, there's there's a level of like hokiness to it, which you, you need for Captain America. Yeah. But... I think it's just that we were still coming off of a time when everybody was just hating on comic book movies for some reason before the MCU really hit its stride. I love I love this. He's asleep. <laughs> it's been asleep for 70 years. I mean, we could give it a couple of more hours just to make sure that Colonel gets a good night's sleep. He said this but, one's waited long enough. Is that guy a scientist enough to know that he could actually wake up Captain America Captain from America. <laughs> or is he just like, we just found Captain America's shield. We're good. For all they know, he's dead. So, I mean, why the rush? I'm almost certain he'll still be dead when the colonel wakes up at 6 a.m. I'm guessing that's what time the colonel wakes up. So, I do like the, they took a little, a slight departure from the comics here in which uh, they do reference that Hydra is part of the Nazis, but they really don't focus too much on Nazis being the bad guys. Obviously there's the USO show where he's like punching Hitler in the face over and over and over again. Yeah. But Hydra just becomes its own evil organization that they keep all the focus on, which I actually really liked. I thought it was a good touch. But like uh, Johann Schmidt is a member of like the Nazi party, but he really doesn't care about Hitler and any of he's Hitler's got his own plans. plans. Yeah. He's got, he's like an extremist with his own, whatever his own ideals and plans and stuff. The casting is great. Hugo you know, weaving was perfect. I think when I heard that he got casted as Red Skull, I was like, oh, yeah. Like, now all I need is just to see the makeup, which was fantastic. I do like basically what he's got on right now is essentially a mask of his own face. 
Yeah. Like they figured out a way to make his own face into a mask. That that I remember when I first saw this, I was like, why are they calling it the Tesseract? It's the Cosmic Cube. I guess you just can't say Cosmic Cube. That sounds a little too... They wanted to give it a more proper name. Yeah. So we've, we've gotten the first Thor movie before this. So in Thor, they've already talked about Yggdrasil, the, the tree. Can or however all he the, pronounces it, whatever connects all the, the nine realms. Yeah. I still, I still can't wrap my head around like, how does nine realms work with just planets and a big old universe? Like, yeah. What are is we talking about dimensions? What what realm is considered a planet? Like Midgard is Earth. Cool. Why is Earth so special that it is a realm? It, like, so at some point they refer to Asgard as a planet. Like mm -hmm. in in Thor Ragnarok, they actually just fly through space and go to Asgard as if it is its own planet. Yeah. While when you're talking about realms, I think of realms as them being spaces in time, like the space time continuum. This might be a little too far fetched for a channel called Cine Fanatics, but <laughs> we're going to start like uh, like Einstein Rosenberg bridges and <laughs> parallel universes and all that I, fun Big Bang Theory nonsense. Bazinga. Uh, I think that it would have to be. Like there's just nine, there's nine places that just have a connection to Idrisil. Yeah, there's just nine places that just specially enough ha are special enough to have that connection for some reason. <clears throat> Would Nick Cage approve of how they put his face on? His face. <laughs> oh. So, are you calling me John Delancey? Like, are we gonna make a Q reference here? I mean, nice. I guess like, I kind of was leaning that way in that explanation, but this got super nerdy. The effects here still hold up. We're looking 10 years later. These effects are still holding up. Uh, I mean, they hold up as in they're, they still look good for that time also. Like when when I saw this in the theater, I thought like his face on that scrawny body did look a little off. I don't know if it's because of the special effects that are used here, or if it's just because I was not expecting Chris Evans' face on such a tiny little body. I mean, by I think, this point, this point I had already seen him in a like not another teen movie where he was like the the star quarterback of the school, so he's not going to look like this. Yeah, you're dealing with like an uncanny valley type situation. Yeah. I'm saying just just in general, it still looks clean and smooth. Especially like here because of the lighting, the low light, and the fact that he's got like all the shirts and jackets on that really kind of help hide this area. It fits in with his head a little bit better. Yeah, throw this jerk out of the theater. He would not last in an Alamo draft house. No. <laughs> Everyone in that theater would be up beating his ass. <laughs> Chris Evans portrayed a banana. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Famous line. I could do this all day. That's what I like about the Marvel writing. Like that line coming back. They've done that with like a lot of things in Marvel. Like certain lines coming back later have such an impact. They're so powerful. Like the Civil War when he says that line again, fighting Tony. Uh. Oh. 
this was also another thing I liked was when watching this, seeing uh, Sebastian Stan as Bucky, I was like, he doesn't look like a Bucky. I'm expecting like a little like Jason, uh, was it Jason Todd from as Robin in Batman, like a little kid to, uh, to be Bucky. And then especially he doesn't have that look. He's too clean cut. I can't see him if they were to ever do a uh, Winter Soldier storyline with like the raggedy hair and grungy looking like he's not going to pull this off. Ooh. Hey, that's why I'm a YouTuber and not a person who makes movies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ye of little faith. Yeah. <clears throat> no, I, I do like Easter I like the tra- the transition from comics to the movie because he can't be like a little kid in the movie. Yeah. He's it doesn't make sense. I do like the juxtaposition. Oh, here. Real quick, the Easter egg, Phineas Horton, the synthetic man. That's essentially the ro- the robot uh, Human Torch from back in the 40s that was a part of the Invaders with Captain America and Namor the Submariner. Yeah. I love that little Easter egg. Uh, but the juxtaposition of the fact that Bucky is like your big, tough soldier person and Steve Rogers is small and scrawny. And then it's going to later flip to where Steve Rogers is big and eh, Bucky looks very small in comparison. So let me get your thoughts because this is this is probably the one thing I don't like about the MCU and especially in this movie is who they got to play the young Howard Stark here. Dominic Cooper. Yeah. Uh, I don't see him growing up to be uh, Trevor, not Trevor Slattery. Trevor Slattery. <laughs> nice. The Trevor Slattery. I don't see him growing up to be uh, John, Slattery. Plays, how, John Slattery. John uh, Slattery. I don't see him growing up to that. Like they, they have like two different looks to their faces. Uh, suspension of disbelief. I mean, it has to be. You don't have a choice. They've already casted and filmed these movies. So Yeah. You see John Slattery more often now than you, you do uh, Dominic Cooper. So it's it's okay just to have someone who's playing him like super young, probably like what we're saying he's in his 20s here maybe. Yeah. Howard Stark in his 20s and the 40s. Because Tony was born, what, late 60s? Yeah. So that means Howard Stark was probably in his 40s when Tony was born. Look, I'm doing all the math here. <laughs> it's the Tooch. It's the Tooch. Stanley Tucci. He ain't looking like Tony Stank, though. <laughs> I love Stanley Tucci's character in this. Erskine. How can I? You're taking all the stupid with you. (laughs) I love that they brought that line back too. Yeah. The only problem with like what they did with Steve here is that the only problem with Steve, like in comparison to Bucky here, is that he looks like Bucky's like kid brother. Yeah. Not like a best friend or some someone that was like with him for you know since childhood. Like they almost like went a little too far on showing just how much of a weakling he is. Yeah, make him just a little bit taller. And granted, I guess I know you're limited by whoever you can cast to portray the young Steve Rogers body here, but yeah. It's still, I mean, it's still seamless looking. There's a couple of like little, like I think gaps, like little jumps that look like something they did. Just had a hard time really connecting the, the fake face with the, the human analog that is playing. Steve right. Rogers. Um, but I mean, that's that's to be expected. 
I don't think uh, you're ever going to completely get rid of a lot of that. Yeah. By the way, guys, if you're joining in and you want to time code as to where we're at so you can jump in and watch the movie along with us, just let us know in the chat. We'll hold up the time code for you. I see the number of fluctuating viewers popping in and out, so just to let you guys know. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. This wasn't something I was like, I wasn't trying to like pick apart this movie the first time I was watching it. I remember the first time I watched this was at a theater, Alamo Draft House, and it was freezing cold. I know, because my girlfriend at the time was watching it with me, and she was freezing to death next to me. <laughs> also, keep in mind that we have watched this movie like a dozen times at this point, so. Yeah, what's that thing that's been going around the internet lately? Is like, name a movie that you know you've easily seen like at least ten times. Like, I would put the entire MCU on there, probably at even least, like in game, at least, at least Phase One. Yeah, well, no, I'd probably put like even in game. I'm pretty sure I've watched in game at least ten times at this point. Really? Again, these are like the MCU movies are ones that I will put on while like like on this laptop. While I'm laying in bed about to fall asleep, I will rewatch those movies and they will always be playing. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's the 4D experience. Yeah. <laughs> I think we made that joke too. I, you were there with me at that showing, right? Oh, I don't know. You remember? Don't uh, make me think about things 10 years ago. <laughs> Oh, that's right. That was 10 years ago. Oh. There's always another one that they had to uh, alter slightly for for the screen. The MCU was not yet in the place where they could uh, do some craziness like they did with Guardians of the Galaxy in Phase 2. Yeah. They've slowly slowly brought in some of the more zaniness of it. But they've earned it too. That being said, there is a world where we can still get the comic accurate Zola. Like, are we sure that he's <sighs> well, completely gone? Not necessarily. We, we could have had they not actually nodded to it already in Winter mm -hmm. Soldier. That's not enough. They can still do it. <laughs> yeah, I want to see him standing alone. Well, so, I mean, look at how the costumes and stuff for other characters have changed over the course of the MCU. Mm -hmm. A lot of characters have just grown more and more into a comic accurate look. Yeah. If he appears again, there's no reason why they can't have him appear as that, but... Maybe. But what I like is I feel like we're in, we're in a world now with the MCU. They could actually show off uh, MODOK. Yeah. If it, those of y'all watching, if you know what MODOK looks like, he's super weird. He's uh, typically sitting on the shelf behind us on our other set. Just click on Hulu. You'll know who modok is oh yeah there's also that hulu that hulu show that i love modok i'm not a huge fan of that show again guys if you are uh if you're here and you want to watch the movie with us let us know in the chat we're going to bring up the time code for you i don't want to see y'all click away when you could be watching and enjoying the movie with us Ah, uh, Haley Otwell. I hate people like that. Like, even in real life, like, I just I can't stand you. I will never pass up 
any opportunity to get Tommy Lee Jones in the MCU. Oh yeah. I'm <laughs> kind of sad that his character really is kind of a uh, limited one and done in movie. Yeah, it's probably not going to come back again in any way. I mean, I'm almost to the point where I'll like, screw the rest of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I want to follow uh, Colonel Phillips here and what he does, he deals with day to day. Like, right. I want to see what happens when they give him the small pork chop when he goes through the the lunch line. When he goes to the chow hall and they don't give him the proper representation that a man of his caliber and rank deserves... Yeah, low crawling sucks. I've done that. Just it's not fun. They really did a great job with the pacing in this movie too, in terms of like getting through his like origin story and all that. Uh, yeah, kind of really like taking each scene and making sure it's highlighting something special about him. Like, I, I especially like this scene where they're all trying to get the flag, and then... You all morons. <laughs> like, you're not you're not meant to be able to climb that pole. No one's meant to be able to get that flag. That's not the point. It's kind of hey. dangling hope in front of you and then yanking it back to break your spirit. In 17 years, not a single person has ever thought of pulling the pin. But I like that he was like smart enough to be like, I uh, calling your bluff. I you almost think the drill sergeant here, I don't even think he knew that. Cause the way mm -hmm. he's he was yelling at him, he's like, You're not gonna get it. Why bother? And <laughs> <laughs> she's dead. He is the clear choice. I love him in this movie and I absolutely hate him in the terminal. Yeah. Sign of a good actor. Yeah. But Hodge is a giant douche. <laughs> He's an idiot. <laughs> Grenade! His just natural instinct is to just jump on it. He didn't even think like, hey, my life is about to be done. Like this is this is the last day of my existence. I he just he didn't even have time for that. He just naturally throws himself on there. How many people do you know of in the world that would possibly do something like that? <laughs> He's still skinny. Love that. <laughs> yeah, because I, I mean, love you, this. You look at how much time he spent trying to get recruited, and then he's gonna throw it all away real quick just to jump on the grenade for the other recruits. It's just natural instinct to protect your fellow man. Yeah. I love this conversation that Erskine has with uh, with Rogers. I love this. There are times where I think for some reason, something reminds me of this scene. I'm like, I want to watch this scene. I'll turn on this movie right at this scene here, and then I'll just continue watching the rest of the movie. I think the reason I like this is like a personal connection. Again, I was in the military. Uh, basic training was a little rough for me. 
<laughs> I mean, not complaining. I mean, it, it was what it needed to be. But towards the end of basic training, one of like the drill sergeants or uh, TIs, as the Air Force called them, um, he really like like I, I happened to be walking past him, and I thought he was going to be like that hard, still like in teacher mode. Uh, cause if you know, if y'all know drill sergeants, that's usually like an act that they put on to help bring discipline out of people. Uh, I walked past him and he was completely normal and he just talked to me like a person. I yeah. feel like that that's kind of the connection here. Now, granted he knew Erskine before Erskine's not a drill sergeant or anything, but just for it's someone to sit there and just talk to you when you're going through something like this, essentially a basic training type environment that means the world to you yeah so red skull took the yeah the super soldier serum and it amplified evil in him Hmm. Yeah, so he called you a weak man. Why did y'all bother hiring all those other people? <laughs> I mean... A good man. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> no, I don't have a procedure. That's like my favorite line. I don't have a procedure tomorrow. I'll drink it now. <laughs> drink, drink it after. I'll drink it now. <laughs> I don't really understand why he needed to turn the light off there other than for the audience sake because they're not ready to show off the red skull yet holy crap people are watching a movie and they can't see my face yet must turn off the light Yes, sir, Mr. Frightening Man. Let's turn the light back on. Now the camera's not facing me. I like that guy's face, dude. <laughs> that guy's face. <laughs> you knew he was about to pee his pants. <laughs> All right, doing good. Okay. In that one. It's crazy to think about like the facade of New York City and how much it's changed. Like this, I have to assume, based on the fact that I didn't live in the 40s, that this is an accurate depiction of what the New York streets actually look like back in the day. Well, I've been to New York and I've seen what they look like now. And it's completely different. Obviously. Yeah, you're not the only one, Steve. Don't worry about it. I wouldn't know how to talk to Haley Outwell if she was sitting next to me, too. To be honest. I would. I'd be Shut like, up. hello, Miss Atwell. I love no, you your wouldn't. movies. No, you wouldn't. 
well, it was nice meeting you and getting to talk to you. Exact, there it is. Exactly. That right there. It was nice. Well, no, because she's not my type. So. She's your type? I mean, she's like clearly like in her, what, early 30s, and this is in the 1940s. She's your type? She could be in their 20s, too. You realize that she would be like almost 100 years old right now. You realize I'm talking about Haley Otwell, right? And not Peggy Carter. Yeah. Always carry an umbrella. Be a gentleman. Always carry an umbrella. It's a rule. It's, <laughs> no, no, never mind. It's also, it's also a secret code to get you into the back room of an antiques. Here's the thing that I've always wondered about these kind of like uh, fronts. Where it's like an antique store, but the back of it turns into this whole like scientific thing, or whatever. Wouldn't someone realize by like the size of the building that there's a whole lot more behind it than what you access at the front? I would like to assume that they went in an elevator and we just didn't see it. Maybe. I'm here, guys. Why are y'all staring at me? Because Haley Atwell walked into the room with them. Yeah, they're not staring at him. They're all staring at her. <laughs> Friggin' 1940s. Hey, Garth. You want a time uh, code? Um, yeah, we'll give you. I'm gonna give you all a time code. We've I've seen like some more people have jumped in. So if y'all want to see where we're at. I'll hold this up for a bit. Steve's about to begin the procedure. Also, Thor and Oakenshield <laughs> sighting. The what? Thor and Oakenshield oh, sighting. That is his name, isn't it? Richard Armitage. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody get that kid a sandwich. Wait, that was him in the back, right? Like behind the spy? Richard Armitage? Yeah. He is the spy. Who's the guy that's playing the lead in Eternals? Uh, Not Richard Armitage. Okay. I'm getting their that, names mixed up. Then. Is that Madden? Richard Madden? Is that his name? Oh, okay. Yes, that's Richard Madden. Okay. What, a woman's not allowed to be down here and help out with this? That's sexist. Eh, there's women down there. Okay. Like, we're trying to blow past the glass ceiling in scientific experiments back in the 40s. Like Half that room is women. So I've taken uh, some vaccines recently. <laughs> I know how that one little shot makes my arm and potentially my entire body feel afterwards. No shot he comes out of this procedure even looking like Captain America and feeling perfectly okay to go chasing down a spy. I mean, after getting the vaccine, I probably could have like left the grocery store that I got the vaccine in and ran down the road been perfectly fine with the exception that I haven't ran in a while and I'd probably be wheezing after like taking five steps. But I mean, beside that. <laughs> it's funny 
<laughs> oh, I got to pee. That's a funny little joke he told there. It wasn't a joke. He actually had to pee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Flame, Flame on. on. <laughs> I mean, they create a multiverse. If uh, Chris Evans wanted to come back, he could play both Captain America and uh, Human Torch. Human Torch. I don't really want that, but you know, it's possible. I thought he actually did a really good Human Torch. He did. There were good aspects of those movies, just not many. Just not Jessica Alba. <laughs> well, and Dr. Doom. uh Doctor Doom's voice after he put on the mask. I liked uh what's his face as Doctor Doom? Just Welcome because to the I was Fantastic Four commentary. Yeah, just because I was a big fan of uh, Nip Tuck, the TV show at the time. Yeah. So I, I liked him on Nip Tuck, but yeah, his voice after they put the mask on was terrible. They needed to have like ro make his voice robot sounding or... Still talking about Fantastic Four. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm trying to ignore the fact that it, this movie is telling us that it's possible to go in like some weekly and come back out. Looking like that. Yeah, so... I'm not trying to look at that. I would like to look like that. I would too. <laughs> I love that little touch was uh, improved. Improved. That was uh, not in the script. That was not planned. That was Haley Otwell going, I have to. I just have to. <laughs> no! You know, it would have almost made sense if you would have done that before the procedure. Wanted to make sure it worked. I guess, but I mean... If it works, then you blow the place up and take the last vial. She's got like a Tommy gun. <laughs> Kind of reminds me of uh, Dick Tracy. Dang, that's a good shot. Yeah. That's one of those, like, I feel like that shot was probably believable just because she is in the military. She probably has that kind of training. Except that then she can't shoot him here. No, you did it. I love the, did you ever see the behind the scenes photos of this shot that he's wearing like fake feet and he's actually like wearing shoes, but with like this like skin colored rubber over the shoes so he could run. Yeah. What's happening? He's like, man, I don't know how to control myself right now. I'm not used to having this much power in my muscles. He's not used to being specimen. <laughs> Not to mention, like, being barefoot without worrying about having, like, get his feet cut up. 
Because I would think like common sense would say like, hey, my feet are going to get cut up and then I can't chase anyone down anyways. So why would I bother? Right. And then we have the famous yeah. photo that has been brought up. Wah, wah. <laughs> Fool you, that kid was like first place at his school swim meet. <laughs> That's okay, I got it. I can I can swim. I'm we're good. I can I can tread water. I'm good. Yeah, that's that's all kinds of like a five pointer round three that I do like the sub though. Like I kinda want one of those just to just I kinda want a sub around. sandwich. Yuck. Oh what? broke your vial. Oh, cyanide. It really is unfortunate that, like, Richard Armitage is a great actor. I mean, you, you turn around, you watch the Hobbit movies. He did a fantastic job as Thorne in those movies. And I feel like he's just so underutilized in the MCU by playing just a random Hydra spy. Like, there's... There's a better role that could have existed for him somewhere in the MCU. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like that guy. It's like very generic sounding like Nazi. The Red Skull has the been indulged long enough. <laughs> Complete with like the Hitler stash. You're an idiot. Okay. Did he just lose his accent there for a second? <laughs> Your enemies? Yeah. <laughs> You have a gun pointed at you, you idiot. <laughs> Why wouldn't you make Nazis the main villains? Like, that's what they are. Because <laughs> it's Disney. He's talking about why they focused solely on Hydra, not just Nazis well, in general. 
that's how it is in the comics for the most part, too. Eh. Captain America's early days, they did do a whole lot of like talk about Nazis and whatnot. They just didn't do as much in the movie. Well, that's what we were saying earlier, is that I actually am okay with Hydra being the main focus instead of focusing on Nazis, just because it makes it more uh, sci-fi and comic booky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I know in the early comics, there was more of a focus on the Nazis, like hence the Captain America number one, he's punching Hitler on the cover. You take off his hat when uh, Agent Carter walked in. <laughs> Watch me. Watch me be yeah. enough. Why is the internet a thing in the 1940s? <laughs> nope, the photo gets around quick though. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. See, that guy looks like oh. someone's like late night talk show sidekick. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> With the plan. <laughs> What's wrong with like, the camera? Yeah, that's like everyone else's like problem is no one actually looks at the camera. <laughs> like That's how you connect with an audience is by looking directly at your audience. Like I'm looking at you. Okay. Except for that joke. Yeah. I got the video pulled up over on the side. I'm just like, what? <laughs> That's weird. Hey, Rachel's here. Rachel, you want the time code? Hello, Rachel. Would you like a time code to see where we're at in the movie? Milwaukee, Philadelphia, Chicago. Man, those kids are like manhandling that comic. Look how wrinkled that is. If they only knew how much that comic book is worth nowadays... Yes, we're at the. Uh, he's the watching the movie theater. Yeah. They're doing the. They're doing the song. Hmm. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Is 
It's a fantastic USO show right there. <laughs> Already volunteer. How do you think it got here? No, they won't. Man, it, I, I love the boots on the costume, though, because those boots are exactly, exactly what his boots look like. Yeah. <laughs> who always brings tomatoes? What is that? Is that uh, Batman Returns? Like, who always brings tomatoes and lettuce to these speeches? <laughs> or you think you're going to need it? It's a good looking picture, though. That's kind of cool. I like that. Making him an artist kind of gives him depth beyond just being a uh, muscle guy. Uh, I believe they do show it in Civil War, like later on. Mm -hmm. Hmm. <laughs> That's that's the battalion that Bucky was in. <laughs> I can spell. I love how Tommy Lee Jones pretty much plays the same character in every movie he's in, and I'm okay with it. Just someone who's like fed up with everybody else around him. The, like some of the stuff he says, like it's only Tommy Lee Jones that would get away with that. This line that he says to Peggy here in a bit, I love. Oof. <laughs> this, Saving line, this line here. <laughs> I just love that line. That I think is like that that line defines Tommy Lee Jones as a yeah. as a character, as an actor. Yeah. <laughs> you have something to say, now's a good time to keep it to yourself. Uh you go back, you watch like his uh especially his character of uh, Sam Gerard from the fugitive or U S marshals is the same kind of like repertoire, the snarkiness to him. I love yeah. it. That's why I love those movies just because of him. The only reason I watched the fugitive is because of him, not because of Harrison Ford. Like, uh, are you the yay? <laughs> I'm going to guess you're the A. 
and that you somehow have the same size head as Steve Rogers. Yeah. After he's taken super soldier serum. <laughs> Where's my helmet? I doubt where I'm going. If anyone yells at me, I could just shoot him. Do you? Fondue? Captain Umerica. <laughs> I love that he doesn't know what fondue is. Yeah. Which is funny because like fondue actually sounds like something that like you would do late at night. Like, hey, and then come back to my place and fondue a bit. It sounds oh, like sweet. something that that could be used as like that kind of a term. Yeah, nothing says romance like melted cheese. <laughs> actually, <laughs> now that you mention it, nothing does say romance like melted cheese. So like that uh that Capital One commercial with Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> you know I never joke about hot cheese, Susan. <laughs> Yeah, they didn't do fondue. Yeah, I have to remember that I live in an age of uh, internet where you can pretty much learn and know about anything that you need to learn and know about without having to be in a place where you would normally experience whatever it is you're learning about. Yeah, fondue, what's that? Oh, now I'm an expert on it. Yep. <laughs> that would be the cheesiest pickup line ever. Hey. Wah, wah. Hey, tonight the part of Rachel will be played by Garth. <laughs> no, the that was part good, that was of Garth. Rachel. Other way around. The part of Garth will be played by Rachel. Okay. That's a nod to uh, Dum Dum Duggan's uh, weapon of choice being a baton. Yeah. Which is. The weirdest thing to allude to in a throwaway line. But see, like that one does it properly. Not like Solo that we have to learn where he gets his blaster at. <laughs> I just hand it to him. That That is actually okay. Like, he just, he just hands him the weapon. I feel like we missed out on some key action there. In the back of a truck. I've driven a truck like that size. They're not fun. Uh, fun fact. Uh, so the, the truck that I had to drive was a stick shift. And I never learned how to drive a stick shift. So not only did I have to learn how to drive this big, huge honking truck. I also had to learn how to drive a stick shift on the same truck. It sucked. It <laughs> I'm used to like my tiny little car, not this big, huge thing. I love like how it sh how they're showing off pretty much just his overwhelming courage because he's never been on. Actually, at this point, he's never been on a single mission. Yeah, and he's just diving head into like the a stealth mission, essentially in the middle of like the enemy's fortress. Yeah. Luckily, the enemy is filled with really dumb soldiers. <laughs> well, okay, but to be honest, though, we did see him go through all that training, though, and all the good guys also seem to be filled with really dumb soldiers, too. So he was the only one that <laughs> made any... I don't know what this is, but I'm going to take it. Yeah, I would have to assume until he fully understands like how strong he is, how fast he is, that he would be doing a lot of sneaking around. Probably a lot that of seems, like bat, Batman type movements. <laughs> I was going to say it seems to be like how most like superheroes kind of get their start is at night, where they can 
hide under the cover of shadow and stuff. <laughs> I love the uh the casting of Dum Dum. Was it Neil McDonald? Yeah. Uh yeah, that was another one like that has a, that guy has a very distinct look to him. Like I can't picture him as Dum Dum. And then they put him in they're like, "All right. They give him the bowler hat and the mustache and call it a day." And it worked. Especially there's a shot of him later where he's holding like a beer mug and he's like, yeah, takes a drink from it and like, all right, that is clearly Dum Dum Duggan. But it's also like it goes to show the level of depth that Marvel is willing to go to at the very beginning here uh, with all their characters to just take characters like Dum Dum and just put them in a movie right off the bat. Yeah. Ooh, look at the lens flares. You'd almost think JJ Abrams was directing this. No, it's Joe Johnson. <laughs> yeah, that okay. So <laughs> take take away that real quick. Uh, this is the guy who directed Jurassic Park 3. And The Rocketeer. Okay. Aside from that, because that's actually a really good movie. <laughs> How is the guy who did Jurassic Park 3 doing Captain America? Remember at the beginning of this watch along, I was talking about like the previous Captain America movies and how bad they were and how like no yeah. one can get this right. And then so you're like, okay, well, we're going to get it right. Really? How? Well, we're going to hire the guy who directed Jurassic Part 3, and we'll make it right. Like, um, <laughs> Yeah, I can tell you exactly how they decided to do that, though. <laughs> uh, they chose the guy who directed The Rocketeer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's good at uh, yeah, superhero period pieces that feature Nazis. Yeah, and they just showed his design real briefly on the table for the robot yep. body. It's one of those little Easter eggs you pick up on after watching the movie time and time and time again. Or, you know, just bring up a YouTube video where someone else has already done it, too. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Both. Speaking of which, I got an idea for new content for our channel. <laughs> Easter eggs. Let's just show the same crap that everyone else is showing on their YouTube channel. It's better than nothing. I mean, apparently it works. It gets views, so. Uh, I do like the idea. Uh, and those of y'all that are watching this live, uh, let us know in the chat what you think of this. Granted, I, I, I know other channels do this as well, but I so I don't feel like it's going to really separate us. But I like the idea of, like, say, when you get a movie that comes out that has, like, a history, especially if it's, like, say, something comic book in origin, what if we made, like, a, a small video, like, hey, two minutes catch up with, like, yeah. the character or what this meant. Like, it's extremely short. It's very quick. You probably don't even see us. It would probably just be a voiceover with a bunch of, like, shots <laughs> and stuff. You just gave the really good selling point. You don't even see us. Yeah. You don't see this beautiful face of mine. This oh, we don't see you? Beard. Wait, you're putting out content that where we don't see you? Sold. I'll subscribe right now. <laughs> That's just mean, Garth. I mean, you can do that by, you know, not watching the video. Yeah.
<laughs> Nor the mean girls in the chat. Do they wear pink on Wednesdays? <laughs> God, this was so good. You are a skull faced man that still technically has lips. Because I can. I'm going to allow you to stay and watch this with us. <laughs> Yeah, the makeup job on Red Skull is perfect. It's perfect. I don't think there's a single flaw in it. I mean, you could find, you can argue lips, whatever, but that's still technically his actual face. It's just kind of burned and dis disfigured a little bit. Yeah. So he, there's a world where he can still have lips, but. Uh, I'm going to guess like the makeup job that they did on him, especially like in regards to his nose, probably the same way they did uh, Voldemort. Yeah, his nose is CGI'd out. Or at the very, yeah, at the very least is a combination like the tip of his nose is probably like painted green and they green screen. They, yeah, they chroma keyed his nose out and then replaced it with the CGI, like the inside of a skull nostrils. Yeah. <laughs> I am being Garth back to Garth. I've had years more practicing at being me. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I could probably do this jump, though. In what world? <laughs> One, if I actually joined like my high school football team and not did absolutely nothing. <laughs> Two, if you didn't enjoy almost an entire pizza for the last week. Almost, yeah. <laughs> followed up by a three-day weekend where my main, I made my own pulled pork. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have a feeling y'all are doubting me for some weird reason. <laughs> I have a feeling gravity doubts you also. Ah, that's mean. It's true, though. Probably not, Garth. Probably not. I'm gonna go, <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh, can you fat shame if you actually do sustain a decent amount of fat yourself? Like, is that possible? What yeah. if you're yes? What if you're the brother and you're doing it for content, <laughs> and you're only doing it to your brother? I really like this moment. I just really hate the line that Bucky says. This is not fat shaming. This is a true statement. <laughs> yeah. The Howling Commandos. Hmm. 
There it goes. <laughs> For some reason, I just hate that line. I like that that was the moment that Steve became charming. Yeah. Couldn't call my ride. Yeah. All right, I'm in love with this guy now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fat because I eat, and I eat because I'm fat. Yeah. There you fat go. bastard line. Wah, wah. <laughs> Love Stanley. Stanley. I saw like some news report that was saying that uh, Stanley like absolutely refused to allow uh, Peter Parker to possibly have like gay thoughts or feelings or whatever. Oh, like. And then someone, I saw the same article, someone respond to it like, yeah, that's why he created the X-Men. So people who are known as like outsiders or just different at the time would completely have no idea how to uh, like be in this world or whatever. Like, yeah, that was pretty good. That shut him up real quick. <laughs> I love when smart people come to a conversation and Natalie argue. Dormer is great. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forget that Natalie Dormer is in this movie. Yeah. This is before she uh, really blew up, too. Became anybody. And or joined Game of Thrones. That is the most Tom Hiddleston looking guy I've ever seen who isn't Tom Hiddleston. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> oh, that was easy. <laughs> How to show characterization in one line. <laughs> Chug a beer between your points. <laughs> and ask for a, a tab to be open. Ah, Bucky's a whiskey man. I do like Bucky. I really enjoy like having now seen uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier and going back and looking at our first appearance of Bucky and seeing like how much he's just grown as a character and changed. Yeah. <laughs> I like how Bucky stands up like he's got a shot in hell. <laughs> it's so funny. He's standing at attention out of respect. Yeah. <laughs> Steve could like lord that over his head and even in that moment he's like hey, maybe she has a friend yeah. but you could take either way you could take that as like I'm joking at you but also I do hate the uh, implication that you got to be like a superhero or go through some kind of scientific experiment to get women to notice you. 
or you know, yeah. like st start a YouTube channel. That one hasn't worked out yet. Oh yeah, it hasn't. <laughs> I was like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> I had to think about that for a minute. <laughs> Wasn't she also in like the uh, Hunger Games movies? Yep. She had like a buzz cut like on the side of her head though. Yep. I'm going to thank oh. you on behalf of the entire women of America. Lady Chill. <laughs> Oh, that's right. Just jump on a grenade to get their attention. Okay. Ah. So after I blow up into like 10,000 little pieces, then more maybe love. be interesting. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. That's the positive can-do attitude that this channel has. Fun doing. <laughs> He does come across like someone who would be a father of Tony Stark. Yeah. Does she know that it's vibranium? Yes. <laughs> yeah <laughs> whatever you need <laughs> I like how they revisited that same shot like in uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier that was good with a uh, US agent yeah Yeah, that's what I thought. Like in the comics, wasn't the shield vibranium and animantium? An anim animantium? Adamantium. Unobtainium? No, that's that stupid movie's metal. Oh, tritium. Yeah. <laughs> tritium. Oh, what was tritium? Oh, tritium is uh, Spider Man 2. Hey, Red, I've heard you're a person that could get me things. <laughs> get me Steve Rogers. Alan but, Antium. Uh, I don't have him stuffed down the front of my pants right now, sad, sad to say. This was the uh, section that was built for 3D because 3D was still a big thing in theaters when this was coming yeah. out. Here's your action trailer shot.
You are wearing a dress. Nothing wrong with that. I just wanted to point it out, but I mean, just saying. It's not really a dress. <laughs> it's a coat. He's European. Leave him alone. I, that's what I said. There's nothing wrong with that. I just want to point it out. No. <laughs> Dresses rule. Oh, I get it. It's a prequel to Snowpiercer. Yeah. What is that actor's name? He really does look like Tom Hiddleston. Mind the gap. I like how he's a British person who says mind the gap. <laughs> I probably have that in the underground. Ew, you like blue cheese? Ugh. JJ Field. Hmm. Actually from uh, Boulder, Colorado, turns out. So not even actually British. Well, I mean, he could still be British. He just was raised in Boulder, Colorado. Well, okay. I mean, <laughs> likelihood here. He really should play Tom Hiddleston's brother in something. That crate said waffles. Well, that works beautifully. Every time someone takes the shield to the chest, I'm thinking all of their ribs just got cracked. Yeah. No shot they're able to breathe perfectly fine after that. Oh, bye, Bucky. Bucky, no! No! I'm so sad and disappointed. <laughs> no! No! <laughs> We're going to see him again later. Don't worry about it. He's not dead. We're not supposed to know that. Oh, he's just really cold. I do like how every single person watching this who knows the comics are like, yes, but did you see him die? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? For, uh, was that a hangover? Yeah. But, but did you die? But did you die? Yeah. yeah. You can't do that voice, by the way. <laughs> I know. It's almost like borderline. Uh... <laughs> I'm doing an impression of the particular actor, not of any ethnicity or race stop the spoilers i know <laughs> whoops whoopsies freaking steak whatever k 
cow. <laughs> so nineteen forties vegetarians don't exist yet. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> If you go to California in the 1940s, <laughs> I'm pretty sure they discovered. While they were not yet putting avocado on their toast. <laughs> well, he just up and left. Yeah. We need like an Arnim Zola the movie. Hey, welcome back. You're trying to click on someone's comment and the mouse just Hey, we're gonna go back. Cool, thanks. Oh yeah. It swiped back. It swiped back, so I was took me right out of the studio. Glad I didn't end that. the broadcast. Yeah. Anyway, yes, so to comment on the uh, Garth's comment here. Yes, it has nothing to do with arms. Old. It's apparently about a Twitter thread. Thank you, A24. <laughs> I do want to watch Midsommar again still. Oh, that's right. I do remember hearing that, that Hitler was a vegetarian. <laughs> You're <right>. an idiot. <laughs> You're dumb. <laughs> no, I do remember hearing that, so... <laughs> You're stupid. <laughs> Although, okay, so he was a vegetarian. Yeah, look how far he got. I mean, let's just be honest. You should probably not talk for the rest of this. I, I, I don't think the reason that he's no longer in existence has anything to do with the fact that he chose vegetables as his main staple of food choice. But, I mean, I don't know. I wasn't born at that time, so I have no <laughs> idea. Even if he didn't die when he did, he would be dead now. <laughs> And you said like the reason he's no longer in existence, like he wouldn't <laughs> have died of old age. <laughs> yeah, 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 like he, he wouldn't have died of old age by now. So he sent it to like five guys instead of like the whole army behind him. It's a lot of heads that grew there. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is the wow. weakest like scientific test there. Mythbusters wow. would probably not be able to test that one. Yeah. I like this part. Oh, yeah, you can't get drunk. Metabolism. <laughs> it's a sad moment, but... Is it sad because we lost Bucky, or is it sad because we just found out that Captain America can't get drunk? <laughs> I feel like that's like a fundamental thing that all humans need to be able to do every once in a while, at least is like, you know what? Stuff has just gone down the crapper. I need to be able to drink my feelings away, at least for one night. I also need to go down to the crapper. At least for one night. At least for one night. Uh yeah, I did like I, I like the parallels between this and Casablanca. Where the after the bar closes that night and he's just sitting at the table. Yep. And he says, play it again, Sam, without actually saying that line because he doesn't actually say that line in that movie.
Explain. No, we're just going to cut to them doing it, and you'll figure it out. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Man, this movie really is like breezing by. Yeah. We put on hold this Captain America movie so we can bring you the preliminary shots from the chase on the moon of Endor. When did Captain America become Ghost Rider? Yeah, I know. Oh, Wilhelm the Wilhelm scream! Wilhelm scream! <laughs> Wilhelm scream. <laughs> Classic. I love catching it, too. You know, that was like Joe Johnson's one stipulation. I have to be able to put the Wilhelm scream in here somewhere. I cannot do this movie if I don't have the Wilhelm scream in here. We will make a video sometime in the future, some kind of content that we create. And I will edit the Wilhelm scream into there somewhere where it seems like it makes sense. And I cannot scream, wait to do that. Wilhelm scream never makes sense. I mean, it kind of made sense there, but I mean, it still sticks out like a sore thumb when you're, you know, to listen for it. Okay, guys, you got me. Ring of fire. Ring of we could fire. Just like, we could just like burn him, you know? Yeah. Or we could do just the ring of fire. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was very arrogant to say. <laughs> I should have done that. <laughs> or you're the one editing that. Yeah, you should yeah. have done that. <laughs> nope. It was late. That would have been funny. <laughs> like the really, really undercuts. Just... Yeah. yeah, it really undercuts the seriousness of what I'm trying to say in that part of the promo. It just became the Marzonia scream. He just said the line, what makes you so special? Nothing. Just a kid from Brooklyn. I could do this all day. There you go. Schedule. Ooh, that's convenient. I don't know which which you like better, the Wilhelm scream ah, or this guy's rah, 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 rah. <laughs> undercuts the serious. Yeah, pushing Alex had no humor at all. It's it's about <laughs> timing though. It's much quicker. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't want to live in a world where people think I don't know what I'm talking about here. Wait, so why doesn't Agent Carter get a helmet to protect her head? Because we can't mess up her hair. Or is she just not expecting to go into combat like that? Probably not. But also because she's one of the top billed like, actresses, actors in this movie that... She, she's got a... <laughs> I love that line. <laughs> Let's Come go find on. two more then. <laughs> yeah. No, they got to keep her looking unique and stand out from everybody else. So no helmet for you. 
Yeah. I like the pause on the doors like, oh, the shield's been removed? Oh, well, then we can close again. Like they had to think about closing. <laughs> Stand clear of the closing doors, please. <laughs> Mind the gap. <laughs> Man, can you imagine how slow the sequence would be if it was Zack Snyder doing all this slow mo and not Joe Johnson? I know. <laughs> and now oh. we get cinema's second longest runway after Fast and Furious 6. Hit the NOS! Hit the NOS! Or at least do the eight gear shifts that you can do in order to speed the car up infinitely. Oh, there's the NOS. Oh, there's the NOS. <laughs> Found it. Actually, it was NOS. In it. All right. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not kissing you. But Colonel Phillips, you might not have another chance. No. The speed Her, they were going. Yeah, but did you see he flipped it around and then he hit the gas to go the other direction? Yeah. Valkyrie. Yeah. Chicago, Boston, New York. Cool. Austin, Texas is safe. Funny enough, it's the name of a Tom Cruise movie where they're going after Nazis. <laughs> Like, hint, it's Tessa Thompson's character in the MCU also. <laughs> that guy's having a bad day. Yeah. So is That he. guy's also having a bad day. No, I'm leaving my shield back there. Those things make the weirder sounds short of uh, Sebulba's like pod. Yeah. Oh, that just got like hyper violent for a Marvel Disney movie. Ejecto Cito, cuz. I love this button.
yeah, the dude going through the propeller was like the one moment when I originally watched this. I was like, who? Really? <laughs> wow. Yeah, so for example, like every time I watch this, I keep forgetting how like he falls out of the jet there and then he managed to get back into the Valkyrie jet. Like I keep forgetting how he actually does that because I'm just not he's got to fly the bomb back into the plane. Yeah. But for some reason I just I never remember that. Even like just now I was like, "Wait, how does he get back into the plane?" I said it before, I'll say it again. I can do this all day. Come on, catch, keep up. When I tell you something the first time, I need you to... I do want to make sure that we highlight this. Tish Schmidt hit the fan. <laughs> Very good. That one, I, I, I really well agree with that one. But the sad thing is, is that while Red Skull is like the arch enemy of Captain America, this is still the Marvel, the regular Marvel uh, affair of I'm just fighting a bad version of myself. Yeah. This is so unrealistic. In real life, both of these men would be puking like crazy after the plane did that. Mm. Ah, oh, they were saying survived. that back before. <laughs> They were saying that phrase back in the 40s before uh, Twitter made it popular to hashtag not my whatever. Please don't make Captain America political. <laughs> no, not at all. Hey, uh, hey, Johan. You ever heard of uh, Vormir? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're about to. You're about to go spend about 80 or 90 years there. Uh, that's the thing. I love that they that we actually got a conclusion as to what happened to him. Yeah. Not like, uh, say like... Uh, leader in incredible hulk we didn't find out what happened to him give it time i think they'll bring him back probably in like the she hulk show that'd be cool but they're bringing back tim roth for it so yeah but i mean i really wasn't curious as to what's happening with abomination Wasn't there another option? Yeah. Point it at the water and jump out of the plane. I like in the second movie, he jumps out of a plane and lands safely in the water. <laughs> like he's got to manually put it in the water though. That's the only problem is he, if he aims the plane and then goes to out the back to jump out. So he doesn't get hit by the plane. The plane's going to recorrect itself and head towards New York again. I mean, that's the only the only ex like reason that makes sense. Yeah, I do like that where you saw uh, 
Colonel Phillips was like, we need to get out of here. <laughs> She'll fill us in on all the need to know information later. Would have been interesting as if at the end of uh, Endgame when they showed Peggy and Steve dancing, um, they actually like did like an establishing shot of like the Stork Club, and they actually ended up dancing in the exact spot they were talking about here. I think that would have been an interesting way to take it too. Um, kind of. Well, except what was it in Age of Ultron when Scarlet Witch does the thing to Steve? He has the flashback of them dancing at the Stork Club. Mm. So we've we've already seen that for the most part. True. I would have liked. True. I would have liked if they would have shown him dancing there in like the house, and Steve clearly did not know how to dance. Like he's just tripping over his feet, and he's gone back and learned how to dance, type of thing. I mean, he had been alive at that point for how many years? He would have known how yeah. to dance. I would hope so. That would happen. Yeah, he should have just left that at the bottom of the ocean. Uh, Thanos would have found it a lot quicker. Yeah. Yeah, the score here is fantastic. And the random shot of the kids playing. Yeah, I, I love the book in pieces here. I'm glad they also didn't make this a uh, post credit. They just made it part of the movie. Yeah. Yeah, because it kind of would have sucked if they would have said uh, if a movie would have ended there and then all of a sudden they're like, hey, there's going to be a Captain America too." Well, wait, he lived? What the? Yeah, you have to do this part. At least for general audiences who know that Captain America lives beyond that movie. Yeah. Or who don't know, I should say. Uh, then also you've got the case that this scene is also here to really fully submit that Captain America exists in the same world as Iron Man because we've seen Iron Man interact with Nick Fury. Now we're about to yeah. see him interact with Fury. Yeah. Yeah. Who is your continuity expert for this? <laughs> Whoops. Whoopsies. <laughs> hmm. 
<laughs> oh, Oops. crap. This would be the time you just tell him the truth. Don't hit a button. Don't do anything. Just tell him the truth. No, because at that point, he's not going to believe it anyway. Well, I mean, have you not seen Aladdin? Tell him the truth. I just thought, how much is this freaking him out right now? Everything is cold and angular, smooth, digital, digital. Where the hell am I right now? Yeah, because I doubt Times Square looked like that back in the 40s. No. Also, how did you get all those vehicles into Times Square like that? And you had to do that in a building that just so happened to be right next to Times Square? Been asleep, Cap. You just time traveled, my friend, essentially. But this is his first thought. Oh, 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 it hurts. God, that's such a good movie. It hurts. So, yeah, again, like, why wasn't he just in like some like he could have been like in a room in the Triskelion. Why did he have to be in a room that's inside of some random building that just so happens to be next to Times Square? Well, it's like they said, they want to break him in slowly. So part of that breaking in process is probably going to be reintroducing him to the city that he grew up in. Or you just have a person go into his room that he's staying in and say, hey, sit down. Let's explain something to you and just tell him before he actually can see it just prepare his mind for what he's about to determine with all of his senses well sorry too logical is, for for a screenplay i mean yeah the truth is they just messed up on a little thing i mean it makes sense that they mess up on i mean look at us for some weird reason my watch said i had a missed call even though you <laughs> Yeah, it's because someone called you twice. Yeah, no, I got that, but you forgot to delete that second call? or hmm. Things happen. It's called compartmentalization. Good one. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Some people just can't enjoy movies again. Yes, that's why uh, Pitch Meeting and Cinema Sins are super popular. <laughs> you can enjoy movies, but it's also fun to kind of understand their flaws and stuff sometimes, too. Yeah. Uh, so I say, I love this movie. Yeah. For all, like, the flaws in it, I love it. I thought it was very well done. Very well put together. The Tooch! The Tooch! Yeah, I think the the problem that people had with it when it first came out, for whatever reason, was just the, it's a period piece. They weren't thinking about the, the, the they were just stuck on the period piece aspect. They weren't stuck on the, he's going to come into our normal timeline. Yeah. No, I'm not ready to move on from this yet. Why would you do that? Jeez, Disney Plus. Do you not realize this is a Marvel movie that has other stuff to it? I mean, besides the fact that the only other thing that's left is just an ad for Avengers. <laughs> I, but I like how they did that. I like how, like, they, there was nothing else. Like, we hadn't seen anything. We knew Avengers was coming. 
in real life, of course, we've read like the internet. We know that they're leading up to Avengers. Yeah. But we really hadn't seen anything or whatever until this. And then there was the... Uh... I'm sorry. I can't control my body right now. This song is just making me do this. <laughs> I know. I can't stop. Somebody help me. You think this was bad? What do y'all hear? What do y'all see him when uh, he happens to hear the Macarena? <laughs> that was the song you picked for that joke. <laughs> I mean, people still like the Cupid Shuffle. <laughs> wow. You should see what he does when Hotline Bling comes on. Nothing. He changes the radio station and then slaps himself because he shouldn't have been listening to the radio to begin with. I've been known. It's a fun song though. Uh yeah, so again, I like I I like that this one ended with essentially the trailer for Avengers. Which was a great idea, and like I'm kind of sad we really haven't seen anything like that. Like Marvel hasn't done that in any of their other movies. Like I would have loved if uh, Infinity War ended with the trailer for Endgame. Maybe not necessarily name no. like saying it's Endgame, but at the same time, no. Infinity War needed that cutoff. It needed that that Empire Strikes Back moment where. This movie is ending on a downer. Our heroes have failed. They haven't won. End of the movie. And just by showing a trailer for like the next movie might give like more hope and action vehicle technicians. Paul Popeye Bone. What a name. Wow. Paul Popeye Bone. That guy just became like in my top like five heroes of all time. <laughs> Paul Popeye Bone. Uh, they didn't succeed. Yeah, and that's why I'm saying like yeah. that would be that would be the why it would be like counterintuitive to put a trailer for Endgame after uh, a, again like Empire Strikes Back. The heroes failed; they lost. That's it. I I almost didn't even want the uh, calling Captain Marvel scene that we got at the end of Infinity War. Where oh yeah, Fury, where Fury and Maria disappeared also. We're showing like some kind of glimmer of hope that Captain Marvel might be involved in it. Yeah, well, like we all knew Captain Marvel was going to be involved in it. You didn't necessarily need to do the the call for her, but that was also before her movie. So, yeah. Uh, but what I liked about that is that kind of led to, ooh, Captain Marvel's going to come in for the next Avengers and save the day. And she really wasn't in Avengers Endgame that much at the beginning and then like at the very end, but she really didn't do she wasn't it, like the major savior did. of the movie. She did a lot, actually. I mean she destroyed other than Thanos' destroying, ship. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, but I mean for that battle, that was huge. They were all gonna die. <laughs> she saved everyone's life. Sure, but I mean it wasn't like the key moment of that entire battle. That key moment was Whatever. Tony snapping. Yeah, sure. You're arguing semantics. <laughs> no, you're just setting up a false narrative. Um, if it would have gone the same way where Tony eventually got a hold of it, then that ship would have been gone too. Yes, that is going based off the idea that you don't uh, snap. he would have he would have survived after the ship like was raining what it what do they call it rain fire after it rained fire on everyone (laughs) 
Starks theme. Starks flying car. <laughs> the semantic fanatics. <laughs> fanatics. Semantic fanatics. Wow, that's a hard one to say. I said the semantic fanatics. Semantic fanatics. I would just drop that one C. Yeah. The semantic fanatics. Um, now here's the like I do remember being in the theater while this like trailer played and we're all like oh yeah this is gonna be awesome. Even like now that we're like post Avengers Endgame, I still think the this first Avengers movie is amazing. Yeah, the fact that they pulled it off to begin with is. The aspect ratio is completely different. Yeah. I'm trying to save it. Wow, this is corny. This is a lot cornier than I thought it was. Yeah, I remember some assembly required. I remember the first time I saw that, I was like, I don't, I, 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 I don't understand what he said there. <laughs> Yeah, like he swing. said, it, he said it so quick and it didn't make sense. I like it. That was one of those, like you need the context clues of what's happening to probably be able to understand exactly what phrase he's saying. But yeah, just out of nowhere. It's like, he's got a mean swing. He's got a mean swing. got a mean swing. Um, yeah. But I mean, again, we're like talking about, let's, let's time travel back to 2011 here. And 2012 is when Avengers is coming out. We knew Avengers was on its way. Uh, we knew the buildup was coming. It was like every every movie having that little that little scene at the end, like Thor's hammer at the end of Iron Man two. You know, the Tesseract was brought into Thor. Was you know all of that, and it was all building up to Avengers. And so then, like at the end of Captain America, the last movie we get before the Avengers, we get that we get that trailer. I almost want to say we knew that that was on there too. Like going into it, we knew that it was attached to the end of this movie. I'm not sure. Uh, well, I, okay, for example, like at the end of Avengers, I knew there was a Thanos cameo. I just I'm, knew that before seeing Avengers. Unfortunately, I'm it would have been kind of cool if that. I didn't. Yeah, yeah. it would have been. It would have been kind of cool if I didn't know it. But yeah, I'm glad I wasn't aware aware of uh, that one because that would have spoiled it. But yeah, no, this is this was this movie is really good. This is a nice when it's a nice a period piece adventure mm -hmm. um, much like, again, this is why you get Joe Johnson. It's much like the rocketeer and how it feels uh, so yeah. many like similar vibes. And that's, I, th I think that's why you got to highlight Kevin Feige's genius uh, going back even in the first phase, because he knew exactly which directors to pick out and which ones to put because of what style he knew that they could bring to certain characters and he knew that, Hey, the vibes that we got from say like the Rocketeer, that's what we're going to want for Captain America and nailed it. I mean, they, they nailed it perfectly. Which so. is kind of, is kind of funny when you, you look at that same perspective and now look at uh, the next Captain America movie, winter soldier, which is what brought us the first movie uh, done by the Russo brothers, which up until that time, They've done a couple of like really good episodes of Community, and uh, what's the uh, oh, I can't think of it. Not uh, not me myself, Irene. It was uh, yes. Oh, <clears throat> hold on, that's going uh, you, me, and Dupree. You mean Dupree? It. Yeah. 
uh, like there's absolutely nothing in you, me, and Dupree that would say like, hey, these guys could helm a political thriller in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. No, nothing about that. There's barely anything in uh, the community episodes that they did that would show that they're capable of handling that. What is it that Kevin Feige knew about the Russo brothers that says, I trust you with, with this story that needs to be told? It's just a matter of, you know, what did they discuss in the meetings that he had with them? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mobius is in you, me, and Dupree. That's right. <laughs> oh, Mobius. Mobius. Get e in Mobius. That? Yeah. Uh, no, he doesn't, but. no oh, bummer. Anyway, this was, it's a good movie. This is really is just a flat out good movie. Uh, MCU knew what it was doing early on, you know, give or take how you feel about Iron Man 2. You know, that that's probably my least favorite, obviously, of the first phase. But, yeah, you know, and the hiccups with like Incredible Hulk and having to change out, you know, Rhodey and all that. But otherwise, the MCU got pretty solid legs early on and, you know, still going strong, still going yeah, strong. Definitely by this time, by the time Captain America First Adventure came out, they knew what they were doing. In fact, I'm willing to bet at this time they already had the the roadway, the pathway to uh, the Infinity Gauntlet and everything already like etched out. They knew they knew that that was like the end game of these yeah. movies was to get to the Infinity Gauntlet with Thanos. Uh, it was just a matter of like how are they going to get there? How is it that we're going to introduce all these other characters like the Guardians of the Galaxy? and make them something that's going to help not only like in their own story and get people on board with them. How is it going to help tell the story leading up to Thanos and the infinity gauntlet? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think uh, especially probably after Iron Man two, I would say after Iron Man two, once they start get, started getting into Thor and captain America, they knew what they were doing at that time. Yeah. Uh, I, well, Okay. Uh, a, a slight question because uh, you do see the the fake Infinity Gauntlet in Thor, uh, which leads me to believe that they weren't one hundred percent set on that direction yet. But otherwise, they they wouldn't have been like trying to retcon that in Ra Ragnarok. <laughs> fake, yeah. I feel like that uh, that was almost like kind of like too too much like out there. Like, okay, this really shouldn't have happened to begin with. You can kind of tell that was a mistake from the beginning. But yeah. Uh, again, I love Captain America, the first Avenger. It's one of the few, like, uh, good, solid period piece type movies that I absolutely adore. Um, period pieces with me kind of hit and miss. Some of them, the story is so compelling. The actors are so good that I'm with it. But some of them, I was like, oh, this is a stretch. So, uh, for example, I loved Casablanca watching that. Casablanca that, is great. Yeah, and that was a period piece even at the time it was filmed. <laughs> but, yeah, that was a fantastic movie. Uh, some of them, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I just know in general, like, a lot of these period piece movies have been hard to really get into with my ADHD self. Right. Anyways, uh, that's going to do it for the watch along tonight, y'all. Uh, <laughs> what did y'all think? Let us know down in the comments. Now, um, again, we do watch alongs usually once a month on the Patreon, patreon.com slash cinefanatics. If you're at the $5, the due tier, uh, you can join us for that. Uh, we have one. It's going to be on the 15th of this month. So in 10 days, we'll be doing another watch along. It's going to be Space Jam because Space Jam 2 is finally coming out. We're going to kind of relive the old glory days and watch Space Jam 1 because, you know what? It makes sense. The new movie's coming out. Let's watch the old one. <laughs> so that's what we're going to be doing over there. Hop on the Patreon, the $5 dude tier. Uh, that one, again, that one's going to be a lot of fun just because I don't think it's aged very well. And we're going to pick out all those flaws, and it'll be a lot of fun to enjoy that. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm just ready to seriously call out like how often people manage to swing back and forth between the real world and the tune world. It's like at one point it looks like it's just a revolving door. So <laughs> I think it's going to be interesting, but yeah, uh, make sure you hop on that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, 
nah, I don't know. Anything else we want to plan? Tomorrow night's tagline, as usual. So we'll be right back here, roughly around the same time tomorrow night. Uh, we're gonna we have a lot to talk about tomorrow night. I know I was putting. Uh, I'm I'm about to be done with the thumbnail for tomorrow night as well. So, uh, anyways, I don't know of anything else we need to plug right now. Loki uh, on Wednesday night. Loki on Wednesday, and I think that's gonna be mostly it for this week. Uh, again, just stay tuned. We got some other video stuff coming out here pretty soon, and then obviously we're gonna have the uh, review for Black Widow up whenever we get a chance to watch Black Widow. Yeah. Those of y'all watching live tonight, uh, make sure to check out the uh, First Class League tomorrow on twitch.tv slash the Schmodown. They're diving into Inner Geekdom. Yeah. Uh, There might be some interesting stuff happening on there tomorrow. Possibly. Maybe. So, uh, yeah. So, that's going to do it for tonight. Thank y'all for watching. Those of y'all that are watching us with us live, thank y'all for being here. Thank y'all for watching. Uh, it, it's great having the audience for this. We hope you all enjoyed this. Uh, if you're watching this on a replay, let us know what you thought down below. I know I said that as a joke earlier, but I actually do mean it. <laughs> yeah, I, always feel, always... I, I always feel awkward doing the things that I hear every other YouTuber do. And so it's like kind of like a, like you breathe air, you have to eat food, you have to go to the bathroom yeah. and shower, you have to click like and subscribe and do all the YouTube things. <laughs> it's, it and... just feels very weird. Also, it's it's really nice, as you said, it's really nice to have a live audience here watching when we're when we're live. Yeah, it really helps the uh, atmosphere of being able to interact with the chat when there's a chat to interact with. So yeah, P- appreciate you guys being here and hanging out with us during the watch along. Yeah. So, anyways, that's gonna do it for tonight. Thank y'all for watching. Uh, if again, if you're not subscribed to us, make sure you hit subscribe and like this video. And we will see y'all later. Y'all. Good night. Y'all. Yeah.